again and I've got another recipe for you to help you through the festive season. So today we're going to make some tear and share bread which is stuffed with chi barbecue chicken and blue cheese. Sounds disgusting but it's absolutely beautiful. So to make the dough, or you could just go to the shop and buy ready made dough which I did plan on doing but couldn't find anywhere. I have in a bowl three cups of all purpose flour. I'm actually using bread flour just because it gives it a little bit more structure. And I've got one packet or two and a half teaspoons of activated yeast sat in a cup of warm water. So it's in a quarter of a cup of warm water. And I've also got in a pan, I have one and a quarter cups of milk and a third a cup of butter, which I'm just going to stick on the hob and let them melt. So then comes a bit where we get to put everything in together. If you've got a bread maker, make your bread in your bread maker, or if you've got um, a stand mixer, get your bread hook on and get it all in there. I'm going to do everything the old fashioned way by hand, so I'm going to have muscle like the Hulk after this. So once my butter and my milk is melted and warm, I'm going to start adding this all together. This is an enriched dough because it's a monkey bread dough, so it's got eggs in it. So to this we're also going to add two eggs, a teaspoon of salt, and it does suggest adding a quarter of a cup of sugar because it's a sweet mix, but I'm going to make it savoury, so I've only got maybe like half of, half of that sugar. It probably will still be a bit too sweet, but hopefully, fingers crossed, the blue cheese will cut through it all for us. So we'll just wait for this to melt and then we'll start adding everything together. Okay, so now my milk's nice and warm and my butter is all melted, I'm going to start pouring this in. Probably a bit too warm actually, I'm just going to mix that through a little bit just to cool it off slightly before I add the yeast because I don't want it to kill the yeast off straight away. It's kind of a bit like a brioche dough, I suppose, it's milk based. Right, so that's warm. I'm going to add in my yeast, which smells horrible. I have to say, I'm going to add my sugar, I'm going to add my salt, and I'm going to add two eggs. And then I'm going to pretend to be a bread machine and give this a right good bash up. So just in the bowl, you need to start bringing all of this together to start forming a dough. So it'll be a bit wet to start with, but we are going to add another two cups of um, flour to this, so don't worry. It's meant to be like this. So just start getting all that glue in, working in your flour. And then we're going to start adding some more flour to it. It's really warm. So, so you can see the uh, the gluten is starting to develop in the flour, it's starting to get elastic here. I'm going to start adding some more flour. So gradually we need to add in another two cups of flour. So to slow me down I'm going to use a half cup measure. I'm just going to add half a cup at a time. And once it starts getting really hard to work with a spoon, I'm going to tip it out on the surface and start to knead it. This is why, if you've got a stand mixer, use a stand mixer, because it won't kill your arms. It's a nice moist dough. So I'm just going to get scrape as much as I can out of that bowl. I'm going to start working it with our hands. So to knead, you literally just pick it up and move it around. This is really sticky, it will come together. I need to start adding some more flour, I should have thought about that before I got it all over my hands. So I now need to beat this up for a good five minutes. So with the power of fast forward, you can see what the end product should look like. So as you can see, the dough's come together lovely. It's all kind of like sticking together. I don't want to overwork this. So what I'm now going to do is put it in a clean bowl with a bit of oil and I'm going to cover it with a shower cap or you can just cover it with a bit of cling film. And you can leave this in the fridge overnight for eight hours. 
but I don't have that luxury of time. So I am got a heating door on my oven and I'm gonna stick it in there for an hour and it should double in size and that's when we can use it. you bakers, if you're ever staying in hotels and the shower caps, make them. They're really good for uh, covering bowls. So I'll be back when this is all nice and risen. Half an hour of being in my heat drawer and my dough is absolutely humongous so I just need to turn it out and knock a little bit of this air out of it. And it's ready to use. So you could leave that in the fridge overnight to prove or you could just do my trick. If it was a loaf of bread, I would follow the instructions exactly, but it's not. It's going to be little pieces of bread, so it's not too bad to just go with your instinct. So what we need to do now is make the fillings. So I'm going to make big balls with chicken in and little balls with cheese. So to make the chicken, I'm afraid I've cheated and bought some shredded chicken. If you've got leftover chicken from Sunday dinner or you've got a rotisserie nearby, then that's the best way of making the chicken. So all I'm going to do is literally put the chicken in a bowl and add a bit of barbecue sauce. This is really cheating. I didn't even buy a chicken breast. I bought shredded chicken. To which I'm going to add some barbecue sauce. Whatever barbecue sauce you fancy. This one's a manuka honey barbecue sauce. Since we're in New Zealand, we're the home of Manuka, I decided to go with that one. I just can't get the lid off. So I'm just going to pour a bit of barbecue sauce in and fork that through. You don't, oh, maybe a bit too much. You don't want it too wet. There we go. I'm just going to fork it through. So the idea is you take a lump of dough, you squish it out. You stick a fork full of chicken in the middle. And then you make a little parcel. And then what we're gonna do is with some homemade garlic butter, is we'll coat these and stick them all together with the little cheese ones in between and they'll be absolutely beautiful. So, I'm not very organized, I'm afraid. Optimum way of making of making monkey bread is in a bunt tin because you get lots of surface area where it can crisp up nicely. I don't have one here and I couldn't find one in time. So I'm just going to use a brownie tin which I'm going to spray liberally with some baking spray. Okay, so as I said, next to my, my barbecue chicken balls is going to be some little uh, cheese filled balls. So I've got blue cheese, you don't have to use blue cheese if you really don't like it. But you don't get, it's not as strong as you think it's going to be once it's in the mixture. And it's a really good cheese to get a nice pungent smell out of. So I'm just going to crumb some of that into the bowl. And then all I'm going to do is exactly the same as I've just done with my chicken. I'm going to take smaller pieces. I'm going to put it in my hand, roll it into a ball, flatten it out and then just stick a couple of bits of crumb cheese in the middle and then make it into a little into a little ball. So I'm going to continue making my cheese and barbecue balls and I'll come back when they're all done. So I've made all my balls and in a pan I have just melted some butter with some garlic and a little bit of mixed herbs and all I'm going to do is dip the balls in the butter and stick them in the pan and you want to cram them in as close to each other as you can mix them all up these have stuck a little bit but you can just reform them so I'm going to dip it in the butter and try not to burn myself this is a bit warm you might want to leave it to cool a little bit and then I'm going to stick them in my pan and I'm just going to push it into the corner with your bump tin obviously it's much better because you can cram them all in all the little nooks and crannies and stick them together it's really nice so make sure you get a nice combination of chicken and cheese and don't burn yourself on the red or butter and just stick them all in your pan. The good thing about this is it doesn't matter that it looks messy, it's meant to. And all the little like bits that stick out are all going to get nice and crispy. 
so it's all good. You can just fill every little tiny nook and cranny. You can see it's just all getting pushed in and I'll find a way to fit all these in as well. And it's in a nice garlic butter bath. It's going to be delicious. Right, so again, as usual, I forgot to tell you to preheat your oven. So you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees centigrade or 160 fan. And I'm going to bake it probably, probably not as long as I would if it was in a bunt tin. I'm going to keep a good eye on it, but probably half an hour. And this should come out nice and crispy and all bubbly and sizzly and absolutely beautiful. So there you have it guys, our lovely pull apart bread. You can see it's all nice and brown and crispy and it's all gooey in the middle and it's going to be yummy. So you can serve it with whatever dips you like. Um, so you can serve it with sour cream, with some chilli sauce, with some barbecue sauce, whatever you like. Serve it hot, serve it cold. We're going to take this with us, we're going to wait for the weekend and this is coming with us as a bit of a picnic feast. So I hope you've enjoyed the recipe. And I hope that you really like the bread. So, if you did, then give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribed to the channel for more recipes very similar to this. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.